Welcome to the Modern Figures Podcast, hosted by Dr. Jeremy Waysom and Dr. Kyla McMullen, where we're elevating the voices of Black women in computing to inspire the next generation of Black female coders. This podcast exists to highlight the stories of Black women in computing, inspire high schoolers and the young at heart, and to dispel the myths and preconceptions about Black women in computing. Kyla and I are from the Institute for African American Mentoring in Computing Sciences, or IMCS, which serves as a national resource for computing students, faculty, and industry professionals, and we are funded by the National Science Foundation. Our goal is to increase the number of African Americans receiving doctoral degrees in the computing sciences, to promote and engage students in teaching and training opportunities, and to add more diverse researchers into the advanced technology workforce. This podcast is funded by the National Center for Women and Information Technology. <laughs> NCWIT is a nonprofit that convenes, equips, and unites change leader organizations to increase the participation of all women in the field of computing. Beautiful. Thank you to our sponsors. Thank you, sponsors. And now we have our guest, Dr. Shabon Day. Hi. Hello. Hi. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for being here. Yeah. <laughs> we are so glad to have you. Especially after a horrendous day of travel. So yes. <laughs> I appreciate you coming all the way down here. Absolutely. It's totally worth it. Glad to be here. So you are a newly minted PhD in computer science. I am. And I'm very happy about that. <laughs> very, only, very happy about that. Not only is she the newly minted, she is the first black woman to get a PhD in computer science at North Carolina A&T. So y'all are looking at history. <laughs> You're the first woman. First woman. Not first just woman. the black yes. woman. Oh, first woman, yes. period. My yes. Yes. That's all right. I am black and I'm a woman. And uh, it, it means a lot to, to have that distinction and honor. And I'm happy I could do it to, to pave the way for the next ladies that will be coming through that program. So I'm very excited about that. That's wonderful. So I know that not everyone decides to go to get a PhD and especially not in the field of computer science. So what kind of informed the decisions that you made as a young child to pursue things that ultimately led you to your PhD? That is a great question. Uh, without going in a long story, <laughs> um, my dad is actually, uh, he's a programmer, and my mm. mom actually worked at IBM for a very long time, almost 30 years. Oh, wow. So um, technology was always in my home. Um, my dad worked in the field, and I am an only child. So oh, wow. yeah, yeah. <laughs> what so. I would do, the computer, I, I've said this before, but the computer was like my sibling. And, and what I mean in that regard <laughs> is that's who I used to play with all the time on the computer. I, mm -hmm. I don't want that to be taken out of context, I think. Some people didn't, no, didn't understand fine. when I said that before, but I meant that I played on the computer all the time. And I did. I loved it. Uh, I had no idea that using the terminal or the command prompt was a big to do. I thought everyone know how, knew how to do these things and so I was navigating my way through and by the time I got to middle school I was already developing my own websites and things oh, of that wow. nature so it was, it was a lot of fun for me. They had something uh, back in the day and hey I'm still kind of young so take that very <laughs> lighthearted. Um, they had something called GeoCities and Homestead. Oh, yeah. um, and, and Angel I, Fire yeah, and all that. So I played around with all these things and, and I was into it and I just love what you could do with technology. You know making things that were you know an idea making them come to life making them look how you want them to look and I just always thought that was pretty cool in conjunction with computers not being able to talk back to you um, <laughs> at the time if you type the wrong command in, the computer would say eh, or something like that and I I like that so <laughs> I did uh, I liked it and so I knew that when I went to college I was going to pursue a degree in computer science because I thought that was exciting fun and I happened to be in some other um, uh, what I would call enrichment programs. Uh, one was mm -hmm. called MSEN. I forget what it stands for, but I think it's like um, math and science or minority science and educational network or something of that, that nature. I can't remember um, what, what the acronym uh, stands for. But being in those types of opportunities where I could pursue math and science, um, those are things that I really enjoyed thoroughly. And so and I always, always like math because I could check my answers. Yep. <laughs> I, I never liked writing essays. Uh, you know, I felt like my teachers didn't like what I wrote. Uh, mm. and so I didn't always get the scores that I wanted. So math and science were just, you know, tangible things that I could say, hey, 
I'm doing this right if I follow this method and I can check my answer and that kind of thing. So I always knew that that's what I wanted to pursue. Mm -hmm. Did you go to like a special math science high school I or anything? I did. And they have one in North Carolina called the School of Math and Science. Oh, yeah. I, I didn't go there. Um, I still stayed in the uh, public school, but I did get an opportunity when I first attended Winston-Salem State University, which is my alma mater. Uh, I attended a program called the MSOP, and that acronym stands for the Minority Science and Outreach Program. Mm -hmm. What that was is not, I guess it's similar to a summer bridge program, but essentially I got to go to college a semester early and take all my math and sciences and English before everyone else got there in the fall. Mm -hmm. So wow. my first fall semester, I was already a semester ahead of all of my peers. And so that got me used to college, um, because I got this chance to stay there over the summer, it got me used to everything where I was already acclimated upon everyone else arriving. So really I cool. think it's I think it's really cool that in spite of your parents both having this passion for computing in, in some way, you chose to follow in their footsteps. And I know that most people don't, right? Yeah. Like mm -hmm. if your parents are doing something, oftentimes you decide you're going the exact opposite direction. Right. Right. Um, so how do you think uh, their influence really impacted you like pursuing what they pursued? You know, that's a great question. I think that by me being an only child and I spending the majority of time with my parents, I personally think I just always looked up to my parents and I still do. Um, I think they're amazing people and just what they were able to do coming from large families and providing for me is just commendable and it's respectable and uh, that's something that I still aspire for one day when, when I'm a wife and also a mother uh, that I want to be able to provide for my children. So I think just them always promoting education and being there to support my dreams and me seeing um, them being successful in, in doing their own, mm -hmm. um, ju it just it's, it inspired me. And then attending Western Salem State University, um, Dr. Elva Jones, who hey. was the first to graduate from NC State, uh, I believe in computer science, and yep. she founded the whole department of computer science at Western Salem Isn't State University. Is there is a, a building, building named, for her. named yeah. after her. <laughs> I got to yeah. witness that they built that building. I believe it opened maybe my junior year, and that, you guys, that is monumental it really to me. Is. Um, I, I just, I didn't know anyone that was alive that had a building <laughs> yeah. named after them. Mm -hmm. uh, that might sound a little ignorant, but I didn't, and she was the first one I saw that, and, and I really admired her a lot too, and, and she actually helped me a lot too. I used to be a lab assistant, I was a mentor for a summer bridge program, I was very active. Uh, at Winston-Salem State, I was also Miss Association of Computing Machinery, mm -hmm. um, so I was heavily involved in just being around her and some of the other professors in the department. Um, they continued to foster my growth and, and cultivate me while I was there. So in high school, did you take courses to prepare you for, for your I, I, I just followed the, um, they had like two uh, paradigms, I believe, like one that if you didn't want to go to college, one if you did go to college, but I didn't take any like AP courses per se, but I did take, um, I can't remember what level I went up to in high school, but I didn't do any AP courses or anything of that mm -hmm. nature, but I did follow the, um, the outline they had for students who wanted to attend college, which I think they wanted you to take a... Uh, a uh, what's it called foreign language mm -hmm. um, and you had to take up to pre-cal or calculus I followed all of those things that they uh, outlined for me so that I could apply for college. But it sounds like for you like just the fact that you had your parents in your home that mm -hmm. were awesome examples of black people succeeding in computing and then having you know Elva as you went to college mm -hmm. like as you it seems like you consistently had someone you could look towards to say if they can do it I can do it. Absolutely. Yeah. In every domain I agree every single space there was somebody that was uh, supporting me and mm -hmm. that that's essential. Yeah. So what made you want to go, so you were doing really well, you know, you finished undergrad, what made you want to go to grad school? I happened to be working for a college um, in the IT department and... Uh, <laughs> this is a common theme that yeah. we're hearing. Yeah. I happened to be working in the IT department, which I love IT. Um, uh, now that I'm finished with my PhD, you know, that when I was there, it's a huge distinction between computer science and IT. Oh, yeah. I get that, but for me, it's all one and the same because I love it all. <laughs> 
Um, I love IT because it's application based. You know, I did a lot of project management, database uh, development, things of that nature. And while I was there, they were like, oh, there's a great graduate program here. And by the way, you could get some some money off of, you know, since you're taking classes at the place that you work for. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I had never even really considered getting a master's degree. Um, and this might sound crazy, but again, I'm being transparent. Um, sometimes if you don't know someone that has these things, it can seem intangible to you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And so I didn't know anyone and I was like, you know what, I'm going to shoot my shot. I'm going <laughs> to apply <laughs> and if I get in, I'm going to work really hard. I applied, I got in, and then I had another crazy, crazy idea. I said, I want to see if I can get this master's in one year. Oh, wow. I don't know why. Listen, it gets better, though. I don't know why I said that, um, <laughs> but I did. So I worked full-time and actually got my master's full-time. Wow. Now, I'm leaving a lot of information out, but let's just say that was a grueling process, and I experienced I some life-changing right. experiences I that I had know. happened before well it, it was just a lot you can imagine working full-time that's a, a lot in itself mm -hmm. and then going to school it was all very overwhelming my first semester if I'm being totally transparent I, I at first I was like I don't think I'm going to be able to do this mm -hmm. but then once I finished and I did well I was like you know what this really might <laughs> be doable <laughs> and so I just kept working working as hard as I could working through that process and one thing that I can truly say is if you have that determination and you have the aptitude and all of that combined together and you keep pushing and you have a great support system, uh, I believe anything is possible. And, and I'm living proof of that. So I was able to do a 36-hour program in one year. Girl, whew. what? That made me tired just hearing you say that. Like, mm -mm. <laughs> mm -mm. Mm -mm. Uh, started in January. I graduated that December. So it, wow. it was a blessing. That's Did you amazing. Sleep? Uh, you know what? I And th this might sound, it, it might just sound like too much, but it's something very fulfilling about actually setting goals and then achieving them. Oh, yeah. They're so rewarding. So I guess if there was sleep that I missed or anything like that, it didn't really feel like it because wow. everything just happened so quickly. Um, it just felt good to achieve. And like and like I mentioned, I didn't know anyone that had a master's degree, not in my field. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so once I got that, I was like, wow, you know, you can really achieve if you just put your mind to it. So where did like your resilience come from? Because like one thing that I've seen is like, you know, oftentimes mm -hmm. if people don't automatically succeed at something, they'll say, oh, this isn't for me. I don't need to do this. But you said, you know, you had challenges your first semester. So I what did. made you say, you know what, I'm going to still do this very difficult thing? You know, it's just something inside of me. Um, <laughs> all I can say is that I'm a not a religious person, but I'm a faith based person. And with that being said, there, there's a scripture that says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I believe even in the midst of adversity, even when you're at your lowest points, if you keep believing, keep praying, keep pushing, eventually you will persevere. The thing about life is things don't happen in our timing. Mm -hmm. They happen when they're supposed to happen. Speak but a lot it. of times it can be very frustrating during that process. Mm -hmm. And that's why we have to remain focused. Mm -hmm. Focus is something a lot of people lack. Yeah. But if you can truly focus in and hon hone in on something and have that great support system, that means people praying for you, encouraging you, lifting, lifting you up and believing in you. It is a combination of all those things that help me persevere in spite of uh, the obstacles that I had before me because I had many obstacles. Um, I don't focus in on, on that a lot of times. I've, I've heard, heard people tell me, oh, you made this look easy. <laughs> I'm glad that I did, but if I were to speak on things that happen, I feel like I'm newly in my career, right? So I, it's too too fresh to mm -hmm. speak on things, but yes, Siobhan Day, no, I won't. <laughs> but yes, Siobhan Day has experienced extreme adversity, yes. I've been through a lot, but in spite of all of those things, I still was able to achieve because of the ter determination and, and, and faith, you know. And, and sometimes, hard work. Yeah, yeah. It's definitely hard work. I, I can't leave that out. Yeah, everything is hard work. It's me pushing myself, even, it's just faith. You got to believe it even though you can't see it just yet. So you just keep working day in, day out um, towards your goal. And those small, small little Marks Victories. that you're making, yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. They they yield to big, big things. 
I want to bring us back to graduate school since you were just talking about adversity and overcoming it. And I know everyone who has sat in that chair, who has a PhD, has said, yes, it was hard and I had to overcome a lot of adversity, but ultimately it was worth it. And I want to know if that resonates with you too. Yes, now on the other side, absolutely. <laughs> um, th during the journey, though, uh, there were several moments, uh, you know, where I, especially just being frustrated, I, because I, you know, I made some life-changing choices. I quit my job to go back and pursue my PhD. Mm -hmm. And so uh, for a while there, I, w I just was not sure. And my mentor, and I thank God for her, she kept saying, when you finish, it will be worth it. I know um. it may not feel like it right now, but just keep pushing and now that I'm on the other side I, yes once you finish um, <laughs> and, and I have to keep saying that right because right. it's a journey once you finish yes it is 100% worth it you know I, I don't have all the statistics but to the last of my knowledge you know we are in the 1% only 1% of uh, I believe it's blacks achieve a PhD in, in CS um, I yeah. think that's correct um, so it's it's hugely important that we're here, that we're we're present. Essentially, what you all are doing today, highlighting the voices, um, so that people can know that you know it it may have traditionally been a white male dominated field, but we are achieving and we're here and our presence is needed. So your mentor was not the person who was advising you in your research then; it was someone else. Yes, correct. Mm -hmm. And you need that too. If advisors are, are great and fine, but sometimes you may need uh, other people who aren't necessarily right there dead in the middle. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it takes everybody. Like you need different people are planting different seeds all around you. So you need to hear from a lot of different people. And she wasn't the only one. And my parents, it was so much, so many other people because you know it's it's natural to be frustrated during this journey uh, mm -hmm. or during that journey. It's, it's naturally uh, easy to get frustrated because. You're working hard, tor hard towards a goal, but sometimes it's hard to see the light at the end of the tunnel. So it's just a natural thing. But yes, on the other side, there is a lot of joy. Uh, <laughs> I think you all can agree with me. There's it's a, a lot better of, paycheck. Yeah, right? Yes. <laughs> and, and it's a whole new network of people, right? Uh, people who are excited to have you a part of the academy or the industry and, and you get to highlight your ideas and work on them. So I, I think it's, yeah, it, it's great on the other side. And I think too you get to kind of come full circle and then be a resource for people Absolutely. who, you know, you there's so many girls who I see myself in their shoes and they're like, oh, but I failed my test. I'm like, me too. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm on academic probation. So was I. Yes. And like to me, that's what made it so worth it like all mm -hmm. of the just the sleepless nights the crying mm -hmm. the everything like it's like this is this was for you mm -hmm. you're right you get to pour back uh, yeah. and uh, just show them like hey I, that was me too <laughs> exactly. sometimes still me I still cry <laughs> so uh, yes so speaking of so you made it you persevered so uh, your website says that your research area is authorship attribution Privacy, security, and social computing. Now, these are words I usually don't hear in the same sentence. So, can okay. you talk about like what you work on and how all of these go together? Yes. Uh, so, first, I just want to talk about my passion behind it all. Oh, sure. Again, I, I mentioned to you all that growing up, you know, um, I was on the computer a lot. That was my sibling. Um, so, the first form of like social computing, or what I would consider social computing, was the chat room. Okay. <laughs> so, oh, yeah, me that too. was so AOL chat rooms and things of that nature. That was the first, to me, form of social computing or as doing some type of social networking. So, my passion was there, but as I got older, I felt, where is the privacy, right? We mm -hmm. have all this information, we're just sharing things, where is the privacy coming from? Mm -hmm. So, when I applied to graduate school, you know, I had this long, lengthy <laughs> statement of purpose about privacy and, and social computing and things of that nature. And so, how it all comes together is, you know, again, back in the day before computers, um, handwriting. That was something that people used to determine authorship. Mm -hmm. But now with actual text, the way that you type something, how you type it, what you do, that can also determine your writing style. Now mm -hmm. how that comes into play with uh, social computing, again, now we have people creating fake accounts, mm -hmm. things yeah. of that nature. So 
my research is based on identifying authorship by someone's writing style and what I did for my dissertation was via tweets mm -hmm. so that might sound simple it's really not at the time uh, <laughs> tweets were 140 characters I believe they've upped it now I think it's like 160 now. yeah they've upped it since then but when I originally uh, excuse me collected my data set it was at the 140 characters um, so determining uh, writing style um, is important so that we can know uh, these malicious originators uh, there's a, a lot of things that are propagated via the net and so I thought this would be a good way not only to protect people um, but those who live in other countries where there's not freedom of speech mm -hmm. uh, where we can preserve their anonymity mm -hmm. um, so that is solely what my research is looking at in Twitter looking how to possibly preserve someone's writing style maybe we can help tell them what features are helping what features are allowing them to be detected and then also determining these originating sources of maybe malicious or um, some type of you know people bully people too uh, they they do a lot of things out here on the web it, it, the web is a great place uh, but it's a it's a dangerous place too and so that's a lot of where my passion comes from in my research and one other thing I want to highlight as well um, the laws have just not kept up with technology so mm, for yeah, me um, <laughs> one of my trajectories that I see for myself is getting into public policy mm, um, because yeah. it's so important to me um, a lot of people don't really know <laughs> what's happening on the internet or the web um, I just got a notification this morning where Facebook um, the photos people back in September um, their photos even ones they may have not uploaded have been leaked to third party um, organizations and so what? yes wow. I, I, I'm kid you not I just read it this morning so they're just now letting people know but this happened in September and a lot of times when people upload photos to social media platforms they mm -hmm. don't really understand that those photos now belong to that organization so there's a lot of things that I would like to help advocate for uh, users mm -hmm. that may or may not be aware since we're now in this digital age where we're no longer uh, content consumers, but we are content providers. Right. Yeah. And people never read the terms of service exactly. and what you're signing your life away to. You're well, just like, yes. I want this account. Even exactly. if you read it, though, right. it's not clear, right? right. Like unless yeah. you understand the specific terminology that's being used, it's, yeah. it's kind of hard to discern what they're talking it, about. It is, and that that's another area that I definitely um, hope to get into very soon because uh, that that's important to me that people understand and we have somebody advocating for the user because it, like you said it's not written in layman's terms mm -hmm. the jargon is not familiar and people again it's like hey get, take my right kidney away right. <laughs> and I can have this social media account and they could be agreeing to that and then they're not mm -hmm. even aware mm -hmm. yeah usable security mm -hmm. is a huge huge thing because yeah you can tell people exactly what you're going to do but if they don't understand the terminology then that's right yeah Man, that's not. This seems like that should be an ethical issue. It, it, it should, should be. be, but I think too many people are benefiting, right, <laughs> from from this. So. Yeah. So like, I guess with like your photos or with with just what you're writing or videos, like there's also the issue of like access to, right? right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I I think about this all the time. Like, not everybody is on the internet, mm -hmm. and the people who are in our community mm -hmm. aren't using it the same way as other communities are using That's it. That's true. So I wonder if there's like, what what that looks like in terms of like research and like oh, how yeah. it relates to privacy and security. Well, that's interesting because specifically with Twitter, and I haven't done any research on Ooh, it, but I know Twitter. they have. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I also say I know they have Black Twitter, and I know mm -hmm. that that can probably easily be accessed with the hashtag. I think they right. use the hashtag Black Twitter. But also something that um, I think is going to be for future research um, now we communicate via emojis and gifts so not oh, even so yeah. much with just text anymore um, you know there that Michael Jordan me <laughs> with, <laughs> with the tears yeah, yeah. <laughs> I see that everywhere I mean I see so many memes uh, or I don't know if they're pronounced memes or memes I think or, it's memes uh, I, 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 I see memes okay so I've heard people say memes or whatever yeah. <laughs> um, you know that's how people are communicating now so it's not even so that and also the uh, WYD, right. <laughs> BRB, people the way even textually the way they communicate is not the same as what it once was. We shorten um, everything up now. We're using emojis or some type of is it GIF or GIF? I heard you say I'm GIF earlier. GIF. I'm team GIF so, as so well. team GIF. <laughs> um, 
Yeah, so those are other things that, you know, research-wise, we're going to have to take a look at also because that, that just adds another layer of complexity because mm -hmm. that gets into big data, right? Because mm -hmm. that's not something that is necessarily um, the way that is uh, the way you would get that feature set is a little bit different. Um, it's yeah. not structured data is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, have you ever been in a room where someone, you know, is typing crying emoji, crying emoji, LMAO, and you're looking at them and they're just like <laughs> deadpan. It's like, so even like actual meaning besides like what you type you could be feeling something that's almost the opposite of what you type so like that too i'm usually actually laughing and crying <laughs> when i send the laughing <laughs> crying emoji it's right. just a feature of my personhood yes. right like i respond mm -hmm. that some way some people they they lie about their laughing emoji they're not <laughs> laughing out loud they're they not they're not that's they mean, true. if it's an uppercase lol i am actually laughing but if it's lowercase i'm like <laughs> Really? <laughs> what, well, you know, it's funny you say that. I, I think that, uh, that I probably am that person. I, when I type LOL, I'm not actually laughing, but I do think it's humorous. Uh, so, <laughs> so you know, so, but I still mean that I, it's funny. You're conveying different yes. different things. Yes, right? exactly. Like, and that's probably a huge challenge with what you're mm -hmm. doing, right? Yeah, like, understanding, like, the connotation and versus the denotation right. or, like, the... the feeling of what's being that, said versus like the, the definition yeah. yes and the sentiment that that's the whole area within itself oh, sentiment yeah. analysis sentiment analysis right. is so hard it, it is right because like you said how someone meant it and how is how Perceived. we're actually yes yeah. that is totally yeah. different and so. sarcasm throws a whole monkey wrench <laughs> into sentiment, sentiment right. analysis mm -hmm. that verse you said earlier is kind of on my shirt right <laughs> yeah it is <laughs> exactly I said I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me um, and she has I can do all things through Christ except play with me. Come for me. Except except come come for me. You can do all things through Christ except come for me. That's what she said. Um, is that from Philippians 2? <laughs> is that from the book of Jeremy? No, that, that, that is, is from the, the Tyrone. No, that is the Negro International <laughs> Version. Okay? So. But I like it. Message. Though. I like message. it. That is the Message Bible. Yeah. <laughs> message? Yeah, I like that shirt a lot. Though. Thank you. Thank one. you very much. <laughs> so, what are you doing right now in terms of your research? I can't say specifically what I'm working on now, but no, I'm very actively working uh, <laughs> on it. Uh, I was hoping to get some things published very soon. Um, it's just taken a little bit of a back seat uh, mm -hmm. for teaching. Uh, teaching has taken a, quite a bit of my time. Where I, are you teaching? I'm teaching at the University of North Carolina at Greensboro. All right. And so I've been very active uh, doing that, and I'm, I'm teaching actually four classes. Wow. Uh, so you can imagine. Yeah. Which four are you teaching? Uh, so I'm teaching, or yeah, teaching uh, three sections of uh, discrete mathematics. Uh, it's a part two. It's two parts at a UNCG, so part one, and then I'm teaching one section of the second half mm -hmm. of uh, discrete math. So um, they're having a lot of fun with that, uh, <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine. Um, discrete math is, uh, is abstract math, and so a lot of them, especially for the part one, um, uh, they call it fundament fundamentals of computer science. It's the first time they've seen anything like that, so it's a bit challenging. Um, but they're working through it very, very well. So, so what's it like being an instructor? It's, it's very hard. I don't think that students really recognize the amount of work and time and energy Girl. that their instructors put <laughs> right. into you. Not only right. creating lessons for them, but you know, homework assignments and also grading and mm -hmm. trying to be fair. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, we take it for granted. Um, or, you know, students take it for granted, including myself um, when I was a student. You just don't really realize uh, it, it is a true gift and an art to be able to get up in front of people and speak. Okay, that's yes. the first thing. <laughs> um, <laughs> and to manage a classroom, because it also requires some management, because mm -hmm. you will sometimes have people who are talking and, and they need to quiet down. Um, so, to me, teaching is a culmination of a lot of different things and also being interactive. I try to be interactive and kind and pleasant and, and make discrete math as fun as as fun as I can right because these are that's this a is, hard class right it fun. is right it is <laughs> and I and I tried this semester uh, like I created like a jeopardy game for them to play for review oh, that's cool. I've that's done nice. a lot of different things to make it interactive and I plan on doing more next semester but those things actually take time a lot of yes, time to plan to prepare mm -hmm. and then because I'm teaching a lot of Gen Z students uh, Communication wise, uh, the way that they communicate and the way they receive information is different. So, I'm also trying to find ways to pull them out of their shell and off the phone <laughs> right. and to engage them. And so, they have clickers, and also, they have, I'm planning on making some slides where they can 
communicate with me and it can be anonymous uh, mm -hmm. because I think one thing I think about students is they're afraid to speak out a lot of times because they're afraid of their peers thinking that they're asking a, a stupid question yeah. or yeah. something uh, something dumb so I also try to have the students come on the board and do some things to work on their public speaking skills as well. That's really cool so I, I just finished developing a course mm -hmm. and it's an introduction to college teaching. Mm -hmm. It's for engineering TAs yeah. here at the University of Florida. So what's what I've learned through developing the course, mm -hmm. you've literally spoken to a lot of components that most instructors, in particular in the sciences mm -hmm. and engineering, technology, math, they don't do. Right. Right? right. Like it, it's it's not common to have active learning, mm -hmm. to be engaged in the way that mm -hmm. you're trying to promote engagement, right. yeah. um, even the involving them in like mm -hmm. conversations right. with each other, like that is not yeah. Anonymous normal. Anonymous questions. Like, yeah, right. that, that yeah. is uncommon. So it's really good to hear that you're yeah. using some actually pedagogically sound yes. <laughs> uh, techniques to ensure that your students are actually having the opportunity mm -hmm. to learn the material. But do you know why I'm doing that? And, and this is just me being passionate, but no, everybody cannot be a computer scientist. That is true. However, I want people to feel empowered that they can be if they do the work. Yeah. And I think that's something um, that I see in my students or some students who switch majors. They have somebody say, oh, you're not good at math. You should just switch. Mm. And my thing is, are they not good at math or has someone not worked with them? Do they need a little bit of tutoring? And sometimes people need a little extra help. Doesn't mean that they just need to switch automatically. Right. Like, for instance, I had a student this semester that doing phenomenal in my mm -hmm. class but the data structures class wasn't doing as well but I, I'm I had a talk with that student and I said if you're doing well in my class there's no way that you need to just switch your major mm -hmm. so that student is going to stay That's I'm good. actually teaching uh, data structures next semester and I'm going to mentor that student mm -hmm. and work closely with them because they're actually very good at computer science but sometimes someone can say something that can make them feel like they oh, can't do absolutely. it and, and that's one reason why I'm changing the way I do things um, one thing that's good about me is I'm malleable I want to see what's effective and I actually really do care about what I'm doing with my students yes, yes. effective instructors mm -hmm. are both coaches and guides yep. this is yeah. instructor Jeremy talking to you yeah. <laughs> and, and yeah I need to connect to, with you yeah. too yeah. What you uh, did here at UF of can course, help of course. Yeah. but I mean it's 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 true that most faculty aren't going to take the time right. to invest in students to yeah. guide them through the curriculum that they need time. to yeah. learn mm -hmm. and then also to like show them the strategies that they need to be successful. Yeah, yeah. we even had a whole, we have a whole uh, center on uh, what is it, engineering education here wow. and someone from that unit came over to our faculty meeting and faculty left. Like, because wow. he came to be just to be like, hey, I'm a resource. Here's some right. things I can do for you. People mm -hmm. started picking up their stuff and leaving. And I thought that was so rude and just showed that, you know, yeah. unfortunately, you know, a lot of people don't value actually thinking about how to teach students. They just rather teach from the same slides they've been teaching from for the past 32 years and never have to but change their mode of instruction. That's, that's a little ridiculous for the simple fact that the model for what a computer scientist looks like has changed. Mm -hmm. yeah. And they, they got to yeah. be on board with that. So that's the, the difference is you have a student-centered yes. teaching approach. Mm -hmm. Right versus like I'm the teacher. Right. Listen to me. <laughs> yeah. I hold all the I knowledge, right. and hopefully, by what I say, you're mm -hmm. gonna gain all of this knowledge. Right. And if not, that's your fault. Like right. that's not what we should aspire to do. No, that's as, not how to learn. No, yeah, it's not. yeah, not at all. So, hmm, how do you see yourself? Maybe a few years from now, hmm. what do you see yourself doing? I'm definitely a, a tenure track faculty member. Oh, snap. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. Uh, yes, yes. I, I definitely want to continue to be in this this space in academia. Um, it is it's not an easy space to be in. Let but me it say that. Sounds like you love. What I you're do. Doing. Yeah. I do. But it's not easy, and I want to note that because I think sometimes people just think that things are easy. It's not. It, it, there's a lot of things going on in acad academia, um, but I do want to stay in this space because this is needed. Um, I had a lot of students come up to me this semester and tell me I was very inspirational to them, that they'd never seen a computer scientist look like me. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's important because they know that whatever they're trying to do is possible. A lot of the, the girls, uh, they, they were so happy to see me in that space too. And so I, I definitely want to stay around and uh, keep inspiring and keep motivating because, you know, I had all 
I had all that done for me. Yeah. So, like you said, full circle, yeah. pay it forward. To whom much is given, much, much is required. required. So, Absolutely. so beyond the tenure track position, do you see yourself like in administration? Yes, I do. Are you going to go on a book tour? You know, you know what? <laughs> yes. Those are all goals of mine. I do want to write a book one day because mm -hmm. this notion that it was easy uh, or I make it look easy, uh, I do want to speak on that at, a, at another point in time. I, like I said, I'm just way early in my career. It's I just too, feel like it's too, too soon. Too soon. <laughs> too soon. Maybe like when I'm 50 yeah. or 60. No. Uh, no, you don't wait that long. No. <laughs> on my tail end of my career. It's your next position uh, and you have yeah. a healthy amount of distance from it. Right. You'll be mm -hmm. good. Sign that contract. Yeah. Be stuck and then right. you can't do nothing. And call that book, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> let me tell you. No, but I do want to write a book. I do want to get an administration, um, be at the decision making table. Um, so that we can change some of the policies, some of the things that are happening so they can, you know, continue to make things better. Um, but yeah, I do see myself, you know, getting more on the admin side to, to help out. Um, on that end and definitely writing a book and you know I, I enjoy what you ladies are doing today you know yeah. um, maybe one day I could have something of the same and invite you on because I think that highlighting other women other professionals in this space is, is so important because even beyond our research right we're just people mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. I sometimes with the title people forget uh, or they think that we're some type of robot or superhuman <laughs> type individuals and really we're just doing the best we can or the best we know how every day. But you clearly have a social life because you're part of a sorority. <laughs> right. You know I what? see the sweater, I, the know, pink I, nails. I, I, you know I just like pink. Let me just say that <laughs> before AKA. But I haven't been able to actively give back right because I was in school so mm -hmm. I'm, I'm financial member but I will look forward to um, you know getting back more involved um, I haven't been able to do anything um, really for the last three years I haven't had a life uh, outside of working on my PhD so one thing that I hope to do is get back to Siobhan yeah. like I said I'm a person I have feelings I live I bleed I cry just like everyone else so most importantly, before I get back to the organizations, I'm going to get back to me. But Siobhan, and, even like giving mm -hmm. back to yourself and doing mm -hmm. all you've accomplished, like that's giving back to your sorority. No, no. But yeah, but I mean like more about like getting back to being more even keel. Like, yeah. You know, getting back to a real person. Yeah. <laughs> when you're in graduate school working in your PhD, you're under such amount of pressure, such okay. amount of stress. And I want to, and, and really I didn't have a break. I went straight from finishing up this summer to immediately working, yeah. um, which I'm very grateful for, by the way. It's a wonderful thing to be able to pay your bills. Mm -hmm. Let me just say that. Um, but yeah, just, just taking a little bit of a break, like a, a week or two, just to kind of get back to me and then I'll jump back in. And I look forward to serving um, in the organizations and, and I, I do still serve but just before graduate school I was really serving a lot and I just had to scale back but I still do give back uh, especially to my alma mater that was one of my greatest accomplishments this year I just want to highlight when I was the <laughs> Founders Day speaker at Winston-Salem State University that was a surreal moment for me and That's I was amazing. so grateful for the opportunity. So Siobhan you mentioned that you where your faculty, you're active in lots of different organizations, you were getting a whole PhD. So like how do you find the time to do all of these things? Like do you believe in this work life balance myth that people I, I'm calling it a myth. That's my own personal <laughs> belief. But like how do you find the time to just remain sane and get all this done? Yeah, so learning the power of no uh, <laughs> is essential and uh, I'm still actively working on that no without feeling the need to give any further explanation. Um, so I'm working on that and I'm doing pretty good at it by the way. Um, the word life balance I'm kind of in agreement with you. I do think it's a myth. I, I want to know who who's doing it and doing it well because I, I don't know anyone. I, I feel that we're all works in progress. We're doing the best that we know how but I can't tell you that I've mastered it. Um, I haven't. Um, sometimes I do do too much. <laughs> I have to go sat down, as they say. Uh, <laughs> I do. And I, I'm getting ready to go do that after today. I'm going to go sat go down sat and down. do some rejuvenation right here before the holiday <laughs> and, and get back to Shabbat. <laughs> um, um, but, you know, a lot of things uh, took secondary uh, to PhD because I just could not do anything else. Uh, it really just took my life. I, I I did some things here and there, but really PhD was a uh, sole forefront. Um, so I, I can't even tell you that I made the time to do everything because I didn't. 
Uh, when I had time, I, I tried to squeeze a few things in here or there, but it really wasn't much time for that. Probably no time for that, honestly. Doesn't um, it feel weird when something that was such a huge part of your <laughs> life is no longer there and you defend it and you're like, now what do I do? No, it feels yeah. beautiful. It does. <laughs> it feels great. No, Emancipation <laughs> that came. <laughs> And freedom it, it, is here. It does right. feel great, only because I didn't go straight through. Mm -hmm. um, for me, I, like I even mentioned, my master's, I was working. So for me, while getting a PhD, I was ready to get back to work because <laughs> I, I don't, like some people really enjoy that student life where they can have a lot of uh, leeway. I don't. I like structure. So I like having a set schedule. That I got to do this, that, and the third. So me graduating, I was like, oh. Can get back to me now. <laughs> like, I can get a steady, uh, you know, income. Um, you know, back to the lifestyle that I was used to. You can get this fabulous uh, blow off with yes, your so crazy, um, isn't it? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so, so <laughs> okay, we're being I'm silly sorry. right now, no, but I'm, I'm actually being silly. Uh, yeah, but uh, but you know, it, it just felt really good, and 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 to. Yeah, and to do some of the things I like to do. Yeah. Uh, so it, it's been feeling really good. But the thing about getting tenure track and getting all these things, you got to stay with the research. Mm -hmm. So you have to stay uh, active and busy um, with that. So it, it's hard to find the balance. And, and I have not mastered it. Um, I'm working on it. Like I said, I'm learning to say no, turn mm -hmm. things down. I can't do everything. And no, I'm not superwoman. Yep. I'm something close to it, but I'm not her. <laughs> <Say> that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and, and so, yeah, so Kyla, I, I don't have it mastered. If you do, please share your wisdom. No, no she does not. <laughs> Wait, Jeremy, share your wisdom. I'm just, I think everybody's faking the funk. Yeah. Like they have it all together. No. no. I, 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 I don't know anyone. <laughs> um, but yes, if, if you all have the resources, please share with us because it sounds like we're all in the same boat. Please help us. <laughs> so, what advice would you give to high school students, maybe middle school, college? whatever, students, um, about how to find their passion, follow their dreams, how to set goals, what kind of suggestions do you have? To oh, everything, don't limit yourself. Mm -hmm. I think the best part about being young, not to say when you get more seasoned, um, there aren't great things there are, but the best part about being young is that you, you can make mistakes and you can bounce back very mm -hmm. quickly. Mm -hmm. I think as we uh, get more seasoned in our journey, uh, we still bounce back, but that bounce back is not quite the same. Yeah. Um, so I when, think we become more afraid. Right. The fearlessness leaves us, right? When you're yeah. young, I, I do feel that you're fearless. So I would say for high schoolers, try some of everything. If, if you have classes and there's something you're curious about, go for it. If there's a workshop that you know about, tell your parents about it. Go to it. Check it out. There is no wrong or right thing. It's about finding what feels good to you. Um, and a lot of times you'll know when you get there because everything, ju it just feels right. Mm -hmm, um, yeah. So I would encourage them to try everything. When you're in high school, don't be afraid to take AP classes. Um, <laughs> that might have been something I was afraid to do too, honestly. Sometimes it seems like your peers are, are smarter than you. I have a secret to tell you. They're probably not. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of times uh, what looks like oh, isn't goodness. really is. Yeah. You just have to apply yourself. You'll be amazed at what you can accomplish if you just put one foot out there in front of the other. Yeah. You don't really have anything to lose per se. Not mm -hmm. unless you get in there and you don't do the work. That's yeah. different. But if you go in there and do the work, you know. So I, I would just encourage young people or any persons to just truly try it out and the thing about learning your passion you can't just do something real quick and then leave it <laughs> right you gotta stick with things people like i tell my my young coders you can't get good at programming until you keep practicing and practicing and practicing you can't get good at it mm -hmm. it's just like sports you're not going to be a good athlete if you don't practice 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 um you know not saying uh, one of my students said something i really like this semester i said oh practice makes perfect she said, no, practice makes permanent. Mm -hmm. Now, I agree with that, too, because if you're practicing something and you're doing it wrong, <laughs> yep. yes, that yes. makes it permanent. However, what I will say is this. If you're actively and consistently applying yourself, you can't help but to get good at it. Mm -hmm. So really I great. would encourage them to pick something, but stick with it for a while to see if you if you like it. Consistency. If you don't, yeah, yeah. It, right, because that's the key. And if you don't, you can always jump to something else. It's, it's not a sentence, yeah. um, you know, just because you pick something and you don't like it. And they, I think they have had statistics to show 
that most people when they graduate, they unfortunately don't even stick with what it is they majored yeah, in. Yeah. I think we're all just lucky, the ones sitting in this room today, that we actually found what our true passion was early on. But that doesn't happen for everybody, and that's okay. Yeah. And that's mm -hmm. what life is all about, learning more about yourself. So don't feel bad about if you make a decision, something isn't what you thought it would be, that happens too. But the main thing is just getting out there and trying something and just working consistently at it, you'll get good. Yeah, when you're young, there's less at stake too. So like, Absolutely. you have less to lose. <laughs> now, if I go out there and jump out there into a new career, I might not have a paycheck. You're but right. you know, but you got bills to pay. I right. never so. know, because you might end up like me. <laughs> <laughs> All that to say, try stuff when you're young. Engineering yes. adjacent, right? Yes, yes. My background That's is not in tech, but That's here I am. But she, she's here, and she's loving it. I, and no, we I love I having really her. Really yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. And, but yeah, enjoy that. Be fearless in all things and the, the resilience is there. I think those are the two most amazing things about being young. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, would you all agree with me? When oh, you think yeah. back to some of the decisions you made, you're like, wow, yeah. okay, yeah. but I bounced back. Yeah, I'm just <laughs> mad at myself for not trying. Exactly what yeah. you said. Mm -hmm. Like, not, there were things that I really, really wanted to do, but I let things hold me back. And I'm like, oh, I don't look like the people who are doing right. that thing. Or, oh, I don't, you know, fit in there. And then what do you do? You get older and you still do it. So, you and then you get mad that you. <laughs> didn't start it earlier you bring up a great point and I want to speak on that really quickly if you're in a space and there's no one there that looks like you or if there's one person that looks like you and maybe they're not as kind to you as you would have hoped don't let that discourage you mm -hmm. either because one person doesn't speak for a group of people mm -hmm. know that sometimes you meet people and and maybe they have a lot going on themselves and so they can't mentor you or uh, be to you what you would hope them to be just don't mm -hmm. let that discourage you either we are all works in progress and sometimes people have things going on that they won't truly address or speak on so i want to say that too because sometimes i've heard things like that discourage people too when they reach out to a person they didn't get back with them don't let that just find somebody else there yeah. is a plethora of us out out here who want to help want to help help see you achieve your goals so just listen a no doesn't mean forever it just means not right now or not that person or mm -hmm. not that situation that, that's beautiful that's a great place to end this episode yes. so Siobhan where can we tell people to find you on social media so, yeah. social media you guys can find me on of course Twitter at Dr. Siobhan C. Day on Twitter <laughs> and that's my whole name yes <laughs> Your first name My for first the name, people. yeah. So it's Doctor D R S I O B A H N C D A Y. So Doctor Siobhan C Day. Look for me on there and we tweet me. Let me know you listened. As always, you can find us on our website at modernfigurespodcast.com. You can ask us questions via email at askus at modernfigurespodcast.com, and you can find Kyla and I on Twitter. And Kyla is at at Dr. Dr. Underscore Kyla, Correct. and I am at Jeremy Waysom. I always mess up her handle. It's, it's a lot. <laughs> Until next time, drink some water, eat some vegetables, and be extra, just like guacamole, <laughs> because guacamole adds quality. It isn't just extra for no reason. Mm -hmm. Like some of y'all.